Manufacturers distribute toluene diisocyanate, commonly called TDI, in a variety of packages, including cargo tank trailers, also referred to as tank trucks. In this section, we will discuss guidance for unloading toluene diisocyanate from cargo tank trailers. This will include preparation for unloading, documentation, regulatory information, pre-unloading, personal protective equipment, connecting, transfer operations, disconnecting, and preparations for return. The receiving, handling, and shipment of TDI require compliance with all federal, state, and local regulations concerning hazardous materials. Make sure you know these regulations and follow them at all times. It is recommended that a comprehensive checklist be developed and followed throughout the unloading sequence. Here's one example of an unloading process for consideration. Let's begin by assisting the driver in positioning the cargo tank trailer at the unloading station. Make sure the driver has set the emergency brake once the tank truck is in position. Shut down the tractor's engine unless it will be used for air compressor. Place wheel chocks under the tires of the tank truck as well as the rear tires of the tractor to prevent movement in either direction. As an added precaution, you may wish to put barricades or warning lights around the unloading area. Check all paperwork for accuracy. Verify the driver's paperwork to validate trailer number, product identification tag, and security seals that the material being received is the correct TTI product and that the weigh ticket shows the quantity being delivered to help ensure the volume of the delivery will fit the storage tank. Review the values of the certificate of analysis to determine whether the product meets required specifications. Once all the paperwork is verified, inspect the cargo tank trailer. Check the tank truck to make sure the numbers on the security seals match the seal numbers shown on the paperwork. Also, confirm that the seals aren't broken and have not been tampered with in any manner. Next, verify that the pad pressure and the temperature are within the required parameters. If they aren't, contact the shipper for further instructions. Check the hazard placards. Make sure that they are correct for the product noted on the shipping documents to avoid cross-contamination. Outside the U.S., different regulations may apply. In the U.S., the Department of Transportation, DOT, regulates the transportation of toluene diisocyanate. Although there are various regulations covering the shipment of TDI, it will be typically classified UN 2078 toluene diisocyanate class 6.1 packing group 2 toxic substance. The letters R, Q are entered either before or after the description of the shipment when individual packages contain 100 pounds or more of TDI. The toxic placard with the UN marking 2078 displayed is the normal placard for shipments of this material. TDI tank trucks must have the required labels or placards applied. The shipping paper must include an emergency contact telephone number that is manned 24 hours a day and appropriate emergency response information. The storage and handling of TDI at your facility may be subject to other federal, state, and local requirements, so adapt processes accordingly. Once the paperwork and tank truck checks are complete, the next step is to check your own equipment. If the content of the tank truck is to be offloaded into a receiving tank, make sure the tank is the correct one for the product and that there is enough room in the tank to hold this shipment. Clearly identify the unloading connection on the receiving line. Unloading responsibilities may include carrier showing the customer how to shut down in an emergency, make and break all connections to the trailer, operate trailer valves, and attend trailer throughout the transfer. On the receiving side, responsibilities may include showing the driver location of safety shower and eyewash station, make and break connections to storage tank system, operate valves in storage tank system, 
and monitor storage tank system during transfer. The unloading operator will show the driver the location of the nearest eyewash station and safety shower. The driver will show the operator where the tank truck's remote emergency shutoff is located. In order to avoid contact or exposure to TDI, wear personal protective equipment during transfer operations. This includes appropriate impervious clothing, such as a chemical protective suit, chemical resistant gloves and boots, as well as an approved full face air supplied respirator. Evaluate if there is a need for fall protection based on your unloading method. Both the unloading operator and the truck driver should be wearing personal protective equipment. Transfer hoses for TDI products are typically two inches in diameter to differentiate them from the three inch diameter hoses and fittings generally used for polyol or resin products. Hoses may also be color coded and or labeled to assist in eliminating transfer errors. Because TDI reacts with moisture, it's extremely important that hoses are dry. If there is any possibility of a problem with a hose, set the hose aside, tag it, and get another hose to complete the transfer. All these checks in this example process may seem unnecessary because the operation is routine, but taking these precautions every time will help prevent product contamination and a potential overflow. Cargo tank trailers are usually unloaded with nitrogen or dry air pressure. An alternative method would be offloading using a pump while adding nitrogen or dry air to maintain a dry atmosphere inside the tank truck. When unloading with either of these methods, leading industry practice is that all discharge vapors be absorbed or scrubbed free of TDI. A closed loop vapor exchange system using a product pump is another means for unloading TDI. Closed loop means that no vapors escape from the system into the atmosphere and no moisture from the atmosphere enters the system. If dry air is used for unloading, it is extremely important to check for signs of moisture. Many companies recommend the dew point of negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If the tractor's compressor is used to generate air pressure, it is extremely important to check the sight glass on the air dryer for signs of moisture. If a color indicating type of dryer is used, the pellets will be blue. If there's moisture in the sight glass or if the pellets are pink, contact your supplier for assistance. If the tractor's air compressor is used, the driver will start the compressor and maintain suitable pressure at the unloading operator's direction. The driver will make connections to the tank truck and operate tank truck valves and all other tank truck equipment. The unloading operator is responsible for connecting the unloading hose to the receiving line and operating the valves in the receiving system. Begin the connection process by checking the nitrogen or dry air source. Check the hose gasket for splits or cracks that could prevent a good seal. Make sure the gauge is working properly and that the hose is attached securely. Remove the dust cap from the nitrogen inlet on the cargo tank trailer. Before connecting the product discharge hose, inspect the fitting on the receiving line. Verify it is in good working condition. If it is a female fitting, inspect the gasket for splits or cracks that could cause a leak or spill. Replace the gasket if necessary and make sure you dispose of the old one properly. Inspect the unloading hose and make sure the quick disconnect fittings and gaskets are in good working order so that the connection will be secure. If everything is okay with the hoses, gaskets and fittings, connect the hose to the receiving line and secure it. The next step is to cut the seal and connect the unloading hose to the tank truck. Remove the closure cap or blank flange from the product discharge outlet and install a fitting with a bleed valve. Now attach the unloading hose to the product discharge outlet and secure it. Connect the nitrogen or dry air supply hose to the nitrogen inlet on the tank truck. After all connections have been properly secured and the checklist completed, sign the driver's paperwork indicating a good hookup has been made. Now the transfer operation may begin. Next, open the tank truck's internal valve 
and then carefully open the external valve. Then open the receiving line valve. Open the nitrogen inlet valve on the tank truck and then open the valve on the nitrogen or dry air source. Introduce nitrogen gas or dry air into the tank truck, usually about 5 to 10 PSIG. The product should now begin flowing through the unloading line. Once you have verified there are no leaks in the system, the nitrogen or dry air pressure will need to be increased to an acceptable pressure, usually between 10 and 20 PSI, depending on the desired rate of unloading. Maintain a constant pressure within the tank truck until unloading is complete. Control the nitrogen or dry air pressure to prevent the tank truck's pressure relief valve from opening. Many companies use 25 PSIG as a maximum pressure. During the unloading process, operators stay in the area to monitor the transfer of product. Outside the U.S., different regulations may apply, so different procedures may be required. In the U.S., the Department of Transportation, DOT, requires that a qualified person attend the unloading operation. Attend means that the person in attendance is alert, has an unobstructed view of the unloading operation, and stays within 25 feet during the entire process. According to DOT, to be qualified, the person in attendance must understand the potential hazards of TBI, know the procedures to follow in an emergency, and have the authority and means to move the tank truck. In addition, follow other safety precautions, such as no smoking, vaping, or use of tobacco products, no eating, and no drinking in the area during the transfer process. Monitor the amount of product being transferred at all times. This can be accomplished using an inline flow meter by watching the tank truck wait if there is a truck scale at the unloading station, or by monitoring the level rise in the storage tank. Using two methods of level measurement increases safety and reduces risk of overflow. Don't rely on automatic shutoff systems to stop the unloading process. Such systems are not foolproof. There is absolutely no substitute for an attentive operator. Monitor the operation to ensure the pad of nitrogen or dry air is maintained in the tank truck. Once the cargo tank trailer has been emptied, disconnect from the system with the same care as it was connected. First, close the nitrogen or dry air inlet valve on the tank truck and shut off the nitrogen or dry air source. Then, close the internal valve on the tank truck. Wait a suitable time to allow completion of the closure shutoff process, about a minute in most cases. Then open the internal valve to blow the hose clear to the storage tank. Repeat as necessary to ensure tank container hose is empty. Be careful not to overpressurize the receiving tank during the hose clearing operation. After the hose is cleared, close the internal valve on the tank truck and the valve on the receiving line. Close tank and receiving line simultaneously to avoid backflow of product into the hose. Then open the bleed valve to depressurize the unloading hose. Make sure you collect any excess product in a catch container that contains a neutralizing solution. Now close the bleed valve and the external valve on the tank truck. Once this has been completed, Carefully disconnect the unloading hose from the tank truck and the receiving line. Use a catch container under the ends of the hose to capture any product drippage. Apply caps and plugs to the ends of the hose immediately after disconnection. Remove the bleed valve fitting, then apply the closure cap to the tank truck's discharge outlet and the closure cap or plug to the fitting on the receiving line. Recheck to see that the tank truck is still pressurized, usually with a minimum of 5 to 10 PSIG of nitrogen or dry air. 
This will help ensure that moisture will not enter the tank truck and react with the residual TDI on the return trip. Finally, depressurize and carefully disconnect the dry air or nitrogen hose from the tank truck's inlet valve. Then replace the dust cap. Return empty tank container with positive pad of dry air or nitrogen gas. Sign the delivery report and note any unusual problems or delays that might have occurred. After removing the barricades and wheel chocks, the cargo tank trailer can be released. In this section, we have discussed leading practices for safely unloading toluene diisocyanate from cargo tank trailers, including preparation for unloading, documentation, regulatory information, pre-unloading, personal protective equipment, connecting, transfer operations, disconnecting, and preparation for return. If you have any further questions or are unsure of the actions required of you, ask your supervisor or team leader or contact the product manufacturer. For more information on the topics covered in this section, consult sources including the following literature developed by the Center for the Polyurethanes Industry, Guidelines for Diisocyanate Storage Tank Systems, Guidelines for Receiving and Unloading TDI, Unloading Toluene Diisocyanate, TDI, Tank Trucks, Poster.